Jana in action. TRBD. Kazi kwa nguvu. TRBD. Hustle every day. Hustle every day. Hustle every day. Hi, my name is Wambo Ithimba. I'm a fashion stylist. And today we are at Photo Village Photo Studio at Uni Africa House. Um, I started working as a fashion stylist uh, four years ago in 2006. Um, what inspired me? Well, actually, how it happened was a friend of mine uh, was the editor of a magazine, and so she asked me to help her out with the styling, and that's how it started. I'd never done it before, and I realized I actually have a knack for it. So since then, I've gotten other jobs from it, and now that's what I do full time. It's not something I'd always wanted to do. It's not something I'd planned on doing. It's just something that I fell into and found out that I actually have a passion for it. Yeah, and I love it. A fashion stylist um, dresses people. So I'm a fashion stylist for magazines. So what I do is come up with a theme. Say for example, it could be, I could be talking about stripes or skirts or suits. And uh, so get a model and get the model to dress in those kind of clothes, what the theme is. No, I actually haven't trained for it, but I've worked also as an assistant um, to other stylists and that's how I learned. But most of it I was kind of just like thrown into the deep end and that's how I got into it. Um, I get a lot of ideas from magazines, so I buy a lot of magazines and then from there I see what, what's available here and what's a trend abroad um, and then see how I can work with that. And from there, that's where I'm, I go to shops. I go around shops around town and that's where I get ideas also from and see how I can work them together. So once that is done, I get a model. I get, I book the, the studio and then um, the next day is when the shoot happens. The first fashion shoot I did was, um, the theme was something to do with uh, bling because I remember there's a lot of gold jewelry and diamonds and studs um, that was done at a studio in Yaya Center and we had Ethiopian models yeah. you have to be creative you have to love fashion I mean that's that's the one thing that I just love I when I sleep before I sleep I think about clothes when, <laughs> when I'm awake I think clothes um, you just have to have a passion for fashion and um, be able to work to work on your feet because it involves a lot of walking around you know you have to find out what's what's new what's new out there um, keep up with the latest trends so that would involve watching shows on telly that have to do with fashion um, buying magazines and stuff like that well, the best thing about this job is that I get to work my own hours. So I plan my shoots. Um, so most of the time I'm free. So if I'm, if, if I'm well organized, I actually work thrice a week. I just love what I do. And it's, it's a gift from God. And the fact that it's a gift from God, it's like no stress for me. It comes easy. It's natural to me. And that's what gets me going every day. Today's story is get, um, get the look. So it's get Rihanna's look. Okay, so these are the accessories I've gotten, which are similar to what's in this outfit. I don't get exactly the same, but I get something similar. So it's get the look, and it's um, what you can get readily available here in Nairobi. So we have a pearl bracelet here, kind of similar to this one. Um, and the necklace, which has some matching earrings. I didn't any capital when I was starting out. I just needed to know the right people. It was a bit hard because um, I was new in the business and some of these shops didn't know me. So I remember my first photo shoot, I used a bit of my clothes and some from my shop. 
um, but now at least I have more contacts with shops so there's some who I who I mean they give me their clothes easily I don't have to like beg or leave a deposit or anything like that okay what the deal is is that I use their clothes and then I credit them in the paper in the magazine so it's actually free advertising for them Most of the jobs I get are usually referrals. Um, it's not something that's ever advertised in the papers or anything. So most of my jobs come from referrals. Um, recently, I started getting people on Facebook asking me for my services. Uh, so just recently, I started uh, shopping for people, um, which makes me a personal shopper. So what happens is, if someone um, needs a new wardrobe, don't know where to get the clothes from, they call me. And since I know I have lots of contacts in shops, so I'm able to get clothes for them and dress them. So that's, that's something that I also do. My name is Kanute Waswa. I'm the managing director of Outdoors Africa a company that does team building, strategy, and what we call the people and culture business process. Oh yeah, then you start talking about starting a business. The first thing that comes to your head is capital. Now, what is capital? Your best capital is actually your idea. But the idea has to be acted upon and the idea must be followed until you can start getting returns out of it. The more important thing for you to realize is whatever little savings you have, that one is enough for you to start out. In fact, studies have proved that if you fund somebody's idea when he's starting out, most times such businesses fail. But if you start with your own resources, it may be 2,000 bob, it may be 1,000 bob, but start out. What happens? You learn the business. You learn the cycles. You learn your customers. And the secret is money will always follow a great idea. It took my parents a long time to actually understand what styling is and most people think that I model or or I'm a photographer or something no one really gets what styling is all about so because it's still new but my parents now I think can explain it because they can show people in the paper that this is what Bamboi does so as long as my parents get it then I think everyone else is gonna get it too. Challenges are Getting models, especially models above the age of 30, it's, it's a bit hard getting them. Another challenge would be getting clothes from different shops. Some shops still don't know me or I'm not too sure that they want to give me their clothes to use. Some, some of them just don't understand that it's actually free advertising for them. So for now, I'm kind of stuck using the same shops, which is okay because they love it. Um, another challenge would be carrying all this stuff around. When I have a shoot, I have to carry humongous paper bags, shoes and bags and clothes, and let's just say that I've been working out lately. <laughs> um, another problem is that some people are so, how can I say, like stuck in the way of dressing, that to try and get them to change is usually a problem, you know? Try to tell people that um, this would look better on you. Most people are just used to a certain style, and so when you try and bring in new ideas, they kind of oppose it. So that's one of the main challenges, especially when trying to style someone. But more often than not, most people are quite open to changing their wardrobe. The going rate for styling is usually, is, is between 5,000 to 20,000 a day. So it depends on the magazine that you're working for, or if you're styling for a commercial, the, rate is different. 
So this is this. I think I've gotten the look, don't you think? Yeah. No. This is the next look. This is that look. What sets me apart from everyone else is that um, this is something that I love to do. I know I'm good at it. Um, my work speaks for itself. There you go. <laughs> Um, I'm good at it. Simple as that. I'm just really damn good at what I do. <laughs> Some of my achievements. I was um, runners-up for Miss Kenya 2001. I've styled Tasca Project Fame. I've worked with Drum, Adam, True Love magazines. A couple of CEOs. I will not name names because they don't want people knowing that they are styled. I hope to have a fashion magazine one day and also have um, a, a TV show on fashion and you know just like kind of like makeovers, dress people. What I'm hoping that in five years time that Kenyans can become more fashionable you know like we can reach the level of, of South Africa for example. Um, I'd like to style using clothes from local designers you know. Um, most of the stuff that I use is from the UK, from the States, from Turkey, from you know. Um, it would be nice if I could source for clothes from Kenyan designers. Um, I walk around in town a lot. Um, what I can say is, is that people don't dress to suit their bodies. And um, there's a lot of, what I, I call them exhibition clothes, you know? Every other person is wearing the same thing. People are not unique. They're not trying to be unique. I'm hoping that with um, the, the styling that I do, that people are able to see that they're they can get unique clothes out there. I mean, you don't have, you can always shop vintage, so also known as Mutumba. <laughs> you know, you can get stuff from different places. Um, you can get stuff made by local designers that doesn't cost too much, you know? Like, people should try and be unique in the way that they dress and look. If you want to be a fashion stylist, I would advise you to love fashion. I mean, that's one thing that you have to love if you want to get into this business. Um, you have to know how to dress different body types. You have to keep up with the latest trends. You have to start making contact with different shops so that it's easy for you to get stuff that you can use during photo shoots. Jobs are not easy to come by because most of them are actually referrals. It's someone who refer you to a certain job. You never hear about them. So, it would be good to do something on the side in the meantime. I started out with styling, but on the side I was selling clothes too. So once I got into full-time styling, I didn't have to sell the clothes. Miyaje Vijana, my name is Wamboi Thimba, a fashion stylist, and you're watching Vijana in Action. Vijana in Action. TRBD. Kazi Kwanguvu. TRBD. Hustle every day. Hustle every day. Hustle every day.